All right, let's talk about how you can create an easy to remember password that you will never have to change again. What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about password creation techniques to help you all create a password that you can use to log into any website. But most importantly, a password that you will hopefully never have to change again. But before we get into all that, be sure to hit the like button, share button, subscribe to this channel, and also go sign up for a Tech G membership. Now, with that being said, we're going to go check out this article discussing passwords about how easily they can be cracked. And then I'm going to show you how to create a password that meets all of the password complexity requirements, but is also a password that is easy to remember that you can use across multiple websites. So let's get into this. All right. So article says cybersecurity expert shares reason password should always be 11 characters. So for those of you who've been taking my IT classes, you should know that in those lessons, I talk about how basically the longer a password is, the more complicated it is for somebody to hack and break into. Now, here's the woman that they were talking about who made this viral video. I'm not going to play the video because during the video, she has a bunch of music playing in the video and I don't know if the music is copyrighted or not and I'm not trying to take those chances out here on these YouTube streets. So we're just going to read what the article says. It says a cybersecurity expert has shared the reason why password should always be 11 or more characters long. Caitlin in a viral TikTok clip said passwords are becoming easier to guess for hackers. Says the cybersecurity girl, that's her TikTok handle right there. She said six or seven character passwords can be guessed in as little as one second. But eight letter passwords see a significant jump and guessed in over an hour. It says the nine letter password can be guessed in just three days. So the perfect character length is 11. Passwords should contain letters, characters, symbols, and should exclude no known words and names, she added. Goes on to say, it would take hackers up to 41 hours to crack these passwords. Researchers from NordPass have revealed the UK's most popular passwords of 2020, and many are pretty obvious. Chad Hammond, a security expert at NordPass said, most of these passwords passwords can be hacked in less than a second. Also, they have already been exposed to previous data breaches. So for example, the most popular password 123456 has already been breached over 23 million times. I find it amazing that in this day and age, people are still using 123456 as their password. It says NordPass evaluated a database that contained over 275 million passwords and found that the most popular passwords were easy to guess number combinations such as 123456 and 1234567789. Other common phrases include QWERTY, I love you, and believe it or not, the word password itself. So there you have it, folks. That was a short, quick article talking about how easy it is to crack a password and why you need to create complex passwords to prevent people from breaking into your stuff. Now I'm going to show you how you can create a simple to remember password that is unique to you, meets all the password complexity requirements. And hopefully if you do it right, you won't have to worry about somebody breaking into your stuff and you won't have to worry about forgetting what your password is when you're trying to log into random websites. All right. So Let's check this out. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how to create a password that essentially has three components to it. It's going to have a prefix and I have a root password. Then it's going to have a suffix. For those of y'all who do not remember what a prefix or a suffix is, I'm going ahead and explain to you what this is. So we're going to take the word uncomfortable. So basically a prefix is a series of letters or words that are attached to the front of a root word. So in this example of the word uncomfortable, the prefix would be un. The root word would be comfort Then the suffix to be able. Just like I stated for prefix, suffix is basically the exact opposite. It's just a bunch of letters and or words added to the end of a word. All right. So we're going to form a password based off of this concept right here of a prefix, root, and a suffix. Now, before we do, I need to discuss the recommended password complexity requirements. If you want to have a secure password that is less likely to get broken into by a hacker. So the standard goes like this. If you want to have a secure comp complex password. Your password should contain uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, symbols. It should also contain no identifiable words. 
such as names. And ideally, it should be at least 11 characters long in total length. So these right here, these are the standard password complexity requirements. And we're going to take all this information and we're going to apply it to this prefix root password and suffix in order to create a complex password that meets all these requirements, but is easy enough for you to remember. And you can apply it to various different websites across the internet that you log into. All right. So let's get into it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to start with the creation of the prefix. So the easiest way you can do this is by simply identifying a website that you're trying to log into and just simply placing the first letter of that website at the beginning of this password. So let's take the website YouTube. YouTube obviously starts with the letter Y. So for this example, we're going to create a prefix with the letter Y indicating that we are trying to log into YouTube. Now we need to create a root password. And this root password, this could be something that means something to to you or something that's very easy for you to memorize, but you do not want to create a root password that has an actual word in it. Take for instance, the word password. We don't want this to be our root password. Now for this example, I'm going to use the word password as an example to show you how to create these easy to remember passwords. But just remember, you don't want to use the word password, but more importantly, you don't want to use an easily identifiable word that can be found in a dictionary as your root word. So in this example, I'm going to change password to this. I'm just going to remove the value. So now our root password is going to be P-S-S-W-R-D. Like I stated, when you're going out there creating these passwords, do not use password in your password. All right. This is just for an example. And then we're going to create our suffix. Now, remember, these are the letters and our symbols that are going to be added to the end of the password. So we come back up here. I stated we need uppercase, lowercase, numbers and symbols, no identifiable words and at least 11 characters long. So we've already accomplished one. We got an uppercase letter right here, all lowercase letters right here. And now we're going to add numbers and symbols. And this, I'm just going to put the number one and the explanation point. So now it's time for us to log into YouTube, right? So when we go to log into YouTube, it's going to ask us for our email address and it's going to ask for our password. And this is what our password is going to look like. It's going to be Y-P-S-S-W-R-D, one explanation point. Now, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine characters. We failed to meet our 11 character requirement using this right here. So what you can do, you can just simply come on over to the suffix and add another number and another symbol. Now we have met the 11 character password length that is recommended by cybersecurity experts. And as you can see, this has uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, no identifiable words, and it's at least 11 characters long. That will be the password to log into YouTube, right? Well, what if you want to log into Facebook? What would you do for this password? Well, the easy way to help you remember what website you're logging into and what password you're going to be using for it. Well, we're simply just just going to change the prefix to the capital letter F to indicate that we're trying to log into Facebook. Then we're going to apply the exact same root password, P-S-S-W-R-D. And then we're going to apply the exact same suffix at the end. So it'll be one explanation point two, an at symbol. If you want to log into Amazon.com, apply the same strategy. We're logging into Amazon, capital A, P-S-S-W-R-D, one explanation point two, at symbol. All right. You see how this is working, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, my prefix is identifying what website I'm trying to gain access to. I got my root password here. That's never going to change. P-S-S-W-R-D. Then I have my suffix over here. All right. Now, what if you're faced with a situation where you're logging into a website that's requiring you to change your password every 30, 60 or 90 days? What are you going to do then? Create a brand new password from scratch? No, you're going to use the exact same password, but this is all you're going to do. So let's go back to our YouTube example. So let's just say YouTube or better yet, let's just say you're at the job logging into the company network and they're requiring you to change your password. And like I say, let's just say that this is your password to log into your work computer. Instead of you having to create a brand new password, all you can simply do is just simply change the suffix. So for our original password, we had one, an explanation point, we had a two and an at symbol. We could just simply come over here and change the last two digits, maybe 
maybe we change this to a three and the hashtag symbol or the pound symbol. And now we have a brand new password. It meets the password complexity requirements, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, no identifiable words, and it's at least 11 characters long. Real simple stuff, right? And remember, this can be applied to any website. All you need to do is just make sure you can create a prefix. You come up with a root password that you can remember. Then you come up with a suffix, right? And you don't necessarily just have to change the suffix when it's time to adjust the password. You could change the prefix, but what you don't want to do, you don't want to change the actual root password because that's going to be the easiest part of the password for you to remember. And also, you don't want to share this information. Now, you shouldn't be sharing passwords to begin with, but you know, just don't share your passwords. So anyways, y'all, hopefully you got something useful out of this on how to create a simple, easy to remember password that you can apply across multiple websites. And also you can use the same password over and over if and when the system that you're logging into is forcing you to change your password. There are various other techniques that you can use out there, like a password generator or a password storage device of some sort, whether it's a hardware or software device, or you could just simply create a root password, create a prefix to identify the website you're logging into and then create a suffix at the end that you can change every now and then in the event that you have to create a new password to log into that website. Personally, I think this is the easiest way to do it and it's also free. So all you're really doing is just creating three components, a prefix, a root password, and a suffix, and making sure that it meets all the requirements that cybersecurity professionals outline that state on what you should do in order to create a safe and secure password that is less likely to get broken into by a hacker. So with that being said, if you got something useful out of this information, be sure to hit the like button, share button, drop a comment. Also subscribe to this channel and go sign up for a Tech G membership so that you can begin learning the information you need to learn to begin your career in IT and cybersecurity. And with that, I will holler at you on the next video. So peace.